Today we are going to embark on another electronic adventure. In July of this year, you may remember, we made an electromechanical visitor counter using modern electromechanical switches and techniques. And the numbers displayed by advanced cold cathode tube technology. This machine is now installed at the reception of this museum is not obsolete. Which means every paying visitor who comes through the door is assigned a number. This number is also assigned a musical phrase. The machine, all in all, contains one million musical phrases, which are electromechanically selected by the switches as the numbers advance. In the previous program of this machine, it was plugged into a modern modular synthesizer. And using a system of rudimentary resistor laddering, it was able to receive different voltages from the designated numbers. Since it has been installed, the musical aspect of the machine has not yet been built, as the modular synthesizer merely acted as a prototype. However, I think we could do a darn sight better if we keep this all in the electromechanical realm. So today we are going to build a jingle machine that will plug directly into the electromechanical visitor counter, which will assign every visitor their jingle. To do this, we will be using these fantastical doohick. <laughs> I can't keep this up, I'm too... I'm sweating in this shirt. I'm gonna go back to normal. So I put the electromechanical visitor counter up over at the museum. But before I did that, uh, a few days after I did the video, I was started wondering to myself, why did I do it like that? I should have done it like this. Yeah, it got me thinking. I built the resistor ladders on top of the uni selectors. But to be honest, it felt like a bit of a shame that it was going from something that was electromechanical and then it was bouncing into the analog electronic world. So instead of it making a melody from a selection of 10 electronic voltages that went over to a modular synthesizer, I added some extra wires to also send out to 10 separate outputs so it could technically trigger 10 separate solenoids. And these solenoids can hit things. Hit things musical like this glock and spiel. However, it took about the same amount of wires that it already had, again, to do this relatively simple modification. And in the process of doing this modification, I also added some single pixel Nixie tubes under every single number, which would denote which number would actually be playing that note at that very time. Which hopefully shows you a little bit more what the machine is actually doing and the melody that it is playing. And that, funnily enough, is where this glockenspiel comes in. So this tatty old glockenspiel is what we're going to actually use to make the musical part of the machine. I've just got to find all of the right notes. E. Is that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, remember in the last video I mentioned at least one of the numbers in the million on the visitor counter is that. It's that. That is the first time we're going to hear it. It's going to be slightly wrong at the end, but that is going to be within the first 10,000 numbers. However, there are a few design obstacles that are in the way before we get to that point. Like I said, we're going to be using these things. They're called solenoids. What they do is you put electricity through them and that causes the electromagnetic coil in here to charge. Pudging bang, they do that. The first issue that we come up against is when a solenoid hits one of these. If you touch it on it for too long, it deadens the resonance inside the metal. But if you make it a very small transient, a really short hit when you allow it to bounce, it lets the resonance shine on through. And like most problems, there's a number of ways that you can tackle this. For instance, one idea that I actually used in the Star Wars Lego Orchestra to make the R2-D2s play the glockenspiels was to make a Lego cam assembly that would lift the beater to a certain point, which would literally just drop it, and then at the end of the cam assembly it would actually lift it back up again, which ended up just being the right amount of time to make the beater go ding! There are other methods that are put to good use. For instance, the Nervous Squirrel in his awesome machine, which is a machine that has a xylophone on top of it and then a piece of radioactive rock. I can't remember exactly how that works, but I think he used springs. So it would push it, go past the momentum, hit it, and then bounce back. Another example is an electromechanical music machine called Totem Recall. And I seem to remember the creator saying that he had springs on the end of these. So when the momentum pushed forwards, these would move forwards on the spring, hit it, and bounce back. So I popped onto Onshape, which is an online computer-aided design program that I like using is and I bash together something like this. This is the prototype I 3D printed on the Lulzbot Mini. This lower part screws into the piece of wood below. It also has the pivot point and a mount for the solenoid. The solenoid pushes this little lever directly which has also got the beater on it. This causes the solenoid to charge, it pushes the beater forwards. 
However, if you can see, I messed up the measurements because when it pushes, it actually gets stuck on that kind of joint there. So I went ahead and slightly adjusted it. All I did was lower the pivot point to below where the solenoid is. Now when the solenoid pushes it, it allows the beater to go further along using momentum. It's a 3D printed a wedge that this mounts to and it actually pulls it further along. So that causes it to push on here. I don't know how to show you this without bolting it onto the wall. But if I put that there, we bolt that there, it's gonna be so it's a very simple design, however it won't work like that, it'll only work on the wall, but that's fine for us. So without further ado, let's bolt some of these mummers together, shall we? So it's all bolted in now, uh, it doesn't work like this way because it's all laying down on the bottom, but it does work. But that isn't all, we've also got this box that's gonna go right here. This box is gonna be pretty funky. So this box is gonna wire up to the Strouger telephone exchange. So that means that anybody can call this from anywhere in the world because remember a couple of months ago we wired it all up to the internet. And when they call up, this light's gonna turn on, uh, thanks to that relay right here. And we've also got the circuitry from a telephone, so we can wire in a microphone underneath the xylophone, glockenspiel thingamajiggy. This is a standard telephone carbon mic to keep it simple. So after a bit of experiment, I found it was very hard to mic the whole thing with one single carbon mic. We could upgrade the mics to be something a little bit better, but I figured let's keep it simple. And I've basically just put two carbon mics in parallel. They work quite well. I've got one on this side. I've got one on that side. So I've put it all together, but I haven't tested it yet. It might not work at all. So we've got to get this put on the wall next to the visitor counter and see what it does. So we've now got it all wired in. We can give it a test run like this. It works. It actually works. Huh. So pretend you've come through the door, I'm gonna go and push the button over the reception desk that registers it as somebody coming in the front door. Let's do it. Are you ready? Yeah! <laughs> oh yeah. Right, there we go. through those two telephone carbon microphones. Well, either A, you can find out by dialing 01843 808 393 and then the extension 2879. Let's find out, shall we? Two, eight, here we go, seven, nine, it's pretty saturated, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, ooh. It's all right, actually. It sounds nice and lo-fi in a funky way. If you want to hear it, of course, you can call it whenever the museum's open, so give it a go. So yeah, it works. It works pretty well. It needs a slight bit of adjustment, but it's on this way, and, and the fact that you could call it from anywhere and listen to what number of jingle it's on, I think that's pretty cool. Two, eight, seven, nine. Here we go, here we go. So 
so yeah, if you like this, so yeah, if you like this, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to support these projects, go and check out Artigon Patreon, loads of other extra videos and stuff. And then that's it from me. Have a lovely time.